I made more progress in my 10 channel amplifier build. In particular, I made these right here, and that's what I want to talk about in this video. These are the main power supply uh, for the amp. There are two of them because I have two transformers. That's how I chose to do it, to split them like that. Um, now, there are a couple of different things. Well, actually three different things on here on each board. There is the power supply itself, which is this big bridge rectifier right in the middle of the board, and these two filter caps, plus these outputs on the back here. And on the other side of the board is a, a soft start. And directly below that area is one other feature, and that's a ground lift that lifts the ground of the main power supplies just slightly above the, I got a mosquito in here, just slightly above the earth ground. There's a, there's a firm connection between the two through this 10 ohm resistor and these back-to-back -back diodes, but it isolates it in the way that it won't allow any current to flow from one to the other, or at least it helps to do that. Now what that does is it prevents hum. Now back to the power, not the power supply, but the soft start. The key component in that is this thing right here. This is what's known as a therm thermistor, an NTC therm thermistor. NTC stands for negative temperature constant. As the temperature of this thing increases, the resistance goes down. Okay, it starts off at 10 ohms. And by the time it gets hot, it's way less than a, than a, a single ohm. So <clears throat> what you have is when this is in circuit with the power supply, this limits the inrush current. And in doing so, it heats up. And as it heats up, the resistance falls. So on its own, this is really all you need. But I've got some other stuff on the board here to actually bypass this after it does its work. So what you have, and I'll, okay, I should mention why you'd want to do that. Well, you, it's, it's, I mean, it's rated for it to stay hot, but you know, you don't really want something sitting there staying hot, right? It, it uh, reduces life. Also, the other problem with an amplifier is that it, it probably won't stay hot. And therefore, if it cools down, during the normal operation of the amplifier, if it cools down, it'll actually, you know, the resistance of it will go up and it'll reduce your power supply. So the best way to do this or use one of these is to bypass them. And that's what this circuit over here does. And I'm going to kind of step through that here. So what I'm highlighting here is where the secondary from the transformer connects. And there are three inputs because it's center tapped. And that connects to the bridge rectifier that changes it from AC to DC. And from there, it goes through these two big smoothing capacitors that reduce the amount of ripple. And the pins that I'm highlighting here go out to the distribution boards. So here's that ground lift circuit. It's very simple. This connects the power supply ground to the chassis ground or the earth ground, but it uses that resistor and those diodes to semi-isolate it so that you won't get current flowing from one to the other. And that will help to eliminate hum that you possibly can get from ground loops. Now over the right side of the schematic, the first thing we come to is this 100 ohm resistor. And this is a current limiter on the small power supply that I have following it that runs the soft start bypass. So it goes through that, it goes through these two one microfarad caps, and that drops the 40 volts AC that's coming from the transformer down to something a little bit less than 10 volts AC. And then once again, it goes through a rectifier, but a much smaller one this time. And that gives me the DC to run the relay circuit. And if you want a more detailed explanation on how the switching circuit operates, I have a link in the video description. Basically what this is, is Q1, R4, and C1 act as a slight delay. You wanna have a slight delay before you cut out the thermistor so that it actually has time to limit the inrush current. And then when that delay is up, it turns on Q2, which then in turn turns on the relay. And when the relay is switched on, it bypasses the thermistor and all of the current is then going through the relay rather than going through the thermistor. So these are homemade boards and they're permanent. I'm not gonna bother to have these professionally made. I think it's, well, it's actually a good use of that type of 
you know, a skill to be able to make your own boards for, you know, a pair like this. Also, I have these that I made along with those. Um, these are the power distribution boards and I have four of them. <laughs> Um, they're quite big because the way I set them up is to, you know, this, this sit down in the bottom of the amplifier up against the heat sink on either side and they'll be oriented like this. And they have fuses on here, rail fuses, and also connectors that will go up to the board, the amplifier boards directly above them. So that's the... Um, that's the orientation, the reason why I did this. It seems like a waste to do this, but um, I'd rather have this than having longer wire, wires snaking around. This way, this sits down below the amp and there's a very short lead that goes from here up to the board. All right, and you, don't have, you don't have wires going everywhere. Okay, so these are fed from these. So you got three of these and three of these and one is for well, I can't say that okay I'm, I'm holding it wrong because okay it's one of these power supply boards with with two of the longer ones right and that'd be one transformer and then the other power supply will go to the shorter boards okay and I've decided to um, use this slightly bigger transformer for the two shorter ones so you've only got four channels on that uh, you know if you need more power from it which i do those will be for the woofer and also two auxiliary channels one will definitely be for the base shake runner in my chair and the other one is unknown yet i'll have it in reserve so with these six boards finished and ready to install i've got two more to make uh, smaller ones one is the power supply for the um, active filters. And the other one is uh, the switch for the power switch on the front. I bought this fancy power switch years ago and I want to be able to use it. So I'm making a switchboard for it that'll have two more relays on it that will actually turn these things on and off. So yeah, quite a bit of like housekeeping with something like this. You know, this is the non-glamorous part of the, the project. You know, everybody concentrates on the amplifier boards and, you know, the pretty case and all that. But, you know, there's a lot of other stuff in there as well. And this would really, you know, you can burn up a few hours messing around with this, trying to get everything organized and neatly fitting inside even a large case.